Hi guys, welcome back to another Pie and Bell art class. This week we're going to look at this woodland scene. We've got trees in the distance and trees close up. So this is something that was requested by one of my members of my usual class. If you'd like to come to one of our classes in Leighton Buzzard or Dunstable, please do look in my bio for my information. And let's get going with this one. So the first thing I did was draw out that path just so that I had an idea of where the pathway came in. And what I'm going to do is make up some greens and I'm going to make up a yellow for my base colour because that's the lightest colour in the background. I'm going to make up a pale grey just to fill in the pathway. And as you can see, the turquoise and the lemon yellow would be the two best um, colours to use to make the most perfect green, the most vibrant green. However, we're not using those to make our greens because these are natural greens, so they will have elements of red in them. Um, a bright, bright green would probably be something more like someone's clothing or something that's actually been coloured green. You don't tend to get it much naturally. So I'm going to cover my entire page with just a layer of water and then I'm going to come in with that yellow but avoiding my pathway because there isn't really any element of yellow in that pathway. So I'm going to leave that. But I do actually make up a little bit more yellow in a minute just because, although this is a nice kind of base colour, it actually isn't very vibrant. I wanted it to be a bit brighter than that. So what I do is add some water to obviously make the yellow movable, but you can see I scrape it across those two um, little trays there, and that's literally because I don't want to add any more water to my paper. I just want to add the colour so once I've mixed the colour up I will drag it across those trays to remove the excess water. And now this is going to be my base painting underneath what I'm doing so don't really overly worry yourself about what it looks like. What you are in fact doing at this point is filling the paper in so there's no white. You don't want any white showing through when you start putting in your more detailed layers and so what you're doing is just kind of looking at the picture. If you imagine looking at the picture from a distance where you'd see lights and dark greens and that's literally it and where you see the really dark elements around the edges which I've made a green up with kind of using a brown instead of a yellow and that's literally all I'm doing and then I might kind of come in and blob in some different colours but that's it. That white area in the middle obviously has to be filled in and I'm filling that in with a very very pale grey which I've made with the brown and the blue um, obviously you might get little elements of that kind of yellow come in because it's all wet at the same time so do be careful to kind of shape it out a little bit with your brush make sure no yellow is coming into it or only a very minimal amount because you are going to work colours over it anyway that's going to be like where there's highlights on the path that grey so again I'm kind of just using some of these colours up now so I'm just touching them in randomly um, just Wherever I feel like I can see lights and darks, I'm just going to chuck a load of this colour in. Like I said, you're underpainting. You don't ever really have to be really precise and lovely with it. You're just kind of giving yourself something that if you left a bit of the paper, you would see this through rather than plain white paper, which would obviously look really horrible. Okay, so this next level we are literally going to do the exact same thing again. It's just this time we're going to have a little bit more control over what we're doing. So basically you can see I've still got those same greens. I haven't changed my palette. I'm just going to use them up. But I've also added a yellow at the top so I can get some light and darks. Now you can do this layer as many times as you want. I'm uh, adding it kind of harsh to places. I'm washing it out places. And I'm just neatening up that background that I've already created. But not overly neat it's not like perfect and you can see the detail I'm just adding color where I want it to be so I've got much more of a kind of underpainting going on you can do this level as many times as you like and put in as many colors as you want but really I was just using up those greens and kind of neatening out the pathway and getting some deeper colors into that background wash that I've got going on So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually apply water to where my trees are that have a light source on them that's lighter than the green behind. So all of the kind of right hand side of my trees that I can see that have a little light source on them, I'm going to apply water to my paint. And this is the lovely thing with watercolour is that you can kind of suck that paint back out. There's no reason why you can't kind of 
come and rework it you have to have quite a decent paper you don't want to have a paper that's just going to rip as soon as you do this but it's really nice with woodland scenes where you don't really need to be using um, masking fluid because it's not a bright white kind of thing that's at the front but you need to have a highlight so you need to suck out the colour so that you can put a lighter tree at the front. So now I'm just making up my colours for my pathway so I'm going to make a really kind of pale grey and I'm going to work it around those light sources you can see that's where the um, little dappled light effect is coming in and I'm working around them but then I am actually going to introduce a lot of different colours when I come down to the front like that orange and I'm kind of giving myself mottle tea patterns going on. It's very orangey brown when it gets down to that front area. And I'm kind of applying different colours and tapping them back and forth and trying to get those shapes that I can see going in that little kind of bit of light source. I think I kind of, yeah, tapped that out if I saw any light source that I'd accidentally missed. And really, it's just about kind of going back and forth, giving yourself some of that edge of that pathway and some of those little kind of textural bits going on so just tapping colour in to give yourself some little bits and bobs going on in there and you can see there I lightly pushed the um, kitchen towel on top just to take some of the colour off to give myself a bit of an effect there as well okay so now that is dry I am actually going to start um, tweaking around with the pathway but also I'm going to start putting the colours into the trees. So what I'm going to do is make up a deep colour which is going to be the kind of shadow area of the tree and a light brown which is going to be the light part of the tree. I'm going to fill it in with the light colour and then you can see I'm going to come in with the dark colour whilst it's wet on the left hand side and just let it soak into it. So again with the light and then the dark on the left hand side and that's all I'm going to do to these trees right now. Now all the other trees that I can see in the picture can possibly be just um, black, entirely dark, without any light source on them. So I have um, decided which ones I feel have to have that kind of real lighter area. And I mean I am going to come in and darken these up a little bit anyway. And you can see now that I'm going to start putting in some idea of some of the other trees which are just going to be a darker colour that actually works over that um, green background anyway, that's why I didn't suck the colour out. Now I did that where I took off some of that because I want one of the kind of bits of greenery to come over this tree. So this big tree I'm doing here you'll see I'm actually going to leave some little elements which I don't really I have to overly worry about being beautiful and precise because I'm going to bring some of that green over the top. All I want is when I bring that green over the top for the vibrancy of the green to show through and if I put it over the top of this kind of bluey black wash the vibrancy wouldn't show through. So I need to kind of leave some areas for the green to kind of really pop and that's all I'm doing there. And that's a bit weird that bit as well because there's actually that kind of thick tree there but that like kind of triangular bit that comes out to the left of it is actually another tree behind that tree so it's all a bit confusing. That's the thing when doing it, doing um, woodland scenes is obviously there's a load going on. Now you can see I'm doing the trees just going off up into the kind of top but not coming off the page. The reason for this is there is a lot of dark elements at the top of this page. So again here you can see I just wash it out into nothing because I know I'm going to bring in some dark greens to kind of come over that, that anyway. And again you can see there it's knowing when to swap up and put your smaller brush, start using your smaller brush because you're working on smaller twigs. And I'm just starting to see this is where I should have swapped out potentially for the bigger brush because I was doing actually slightly larger larger twiggy bit there and it was hard to hold the amount of paint I needed to into the brush so I probably would have done better with swapping out for the bigger brush but it is just you can persevere with a big brush and use the point or you can obviously kind of use the smaller brush and do a large area but you just have to dip a bit more. Now this is where I start bringing in those really dark elements in the bottom here I really wanted to kind of have an idea of that going all the way across the bottom so I was using water and a little bit of a dark colour and I was deciding where I wanted it and how far up I wanted it to go. 
because it's really very dark all the way around the edge of this picture. The whole kind of top half is dark, but more, I'd say, a dark greeny colour, and the bottom half is much more kind of brownies, dark areas. So I'm doing them separately, I'm not doing them at the same time, because I want them to have that slightly different hue. And I'm also bringing in some kind of idea of some shadows across that path as well of the trees and whatever else is going on in there because obviously there's dappled light there's the little light sources but there also is going to be lots of little dark areas as well I'm just bringing in any little kind of twigs and stuff I'm always you'll see for the whole of this last section just bringing more and more twigs across because the more your picture builds up the more you'll know what kind of twigs you want to bring in I've obviously got the main trees in there now and I know what I'm working with but there's no reason you can't bring in more trees as you're going along just to kind of fill the space up so again I'm making up some darker greens now this is for the top element the top bits of the trees because I've done the brown across the bottom then I'm going to bring it up to the top I can see I'm also bringing in elements of it along the bottom but mainly this is for the top section now and you can see now how what I meant about bringing in that green over the top of that tree how once you've touched the green like little bits of the plant onto it it doesn't suddenly look as strange and weird that I had those little bits cut out and yes do turn your board around to make life easier I think the the, the difficulty with doing it back and forth is like you know you, it's easier to paint it when it's the right the other way around but then sometimes you can't see exactly where you're putting your your kind of twigs and stuff and you can see here I'm using the paint when the paint is running out a little bit or I'm changing the colour to be a bit lighter I'm using it in those softer areas in the middle I don't want that to be too deep I want the, the brightness to be in the centre of this picture and then all the dark to be around the edges although I don't want it to be completely washy in the middle so I am trying to give myself something going on there and then I want the real deep to go all the way around the edges like it is So I think I found this left hand side the most problematic because the right hand side had still got quite a lot of light in it but this left hand side was a lot heavier and it's really hard to get the definition with your twigs and stuff with so much heaviness so I was trying to kind of decide what I wanted to do of it, how far I wanted to take it and also washing out quite a lot. You can see a lot of the time when I'm adding the colour if I feel like it's a bit too much going on, I will just wash it out with a little bit of water. Okay, so now I've taken the tape off because I know that really all I'm going to do is kind of fiddle about with it and give myself those last little details. What I am going to do is kind of work on those front trees because I left them very light because there was a light source on them but I can see now that I've kind of taken a step back from the picture that they definitely need darkening up to give them more of a presence as a foreground tree. So I am going to run the kind of deepness down there and just give myself the smallest little highlight and I'm going to do the same to that right hand tree as well. Uh, I'm working on this kind of split one now, but that right hand tree that's a lot lighter, I am going to give myself a bit more definition to that. And again, like I said, at this point I can see that I can add quite a lot more twigs and branches going off. I can kind of see exactly how much more I want to give myself in this picture. And I'm going to add a little bit more of that kind of dappled ground going on. I don't want to go too heavy on those background trees there, those two ones that are behind this kind of curly twig, just because they look really backgroundy. I've got a nice kind of depth because they're so light in comparison to these ones in the foreground. And I still want that light source on this tree. I just want to kind of it not to be quite so stark because it looks a little fake. So I'm just adding a little something. And I'm giving myself a little bit more of a definition of where that tree is coming in and shaping out those little leaves now a bit better now I can actually see them with the green on top which obviously makes it a lot more easy for you to kind of decipher what's there and see what's going on and then give myself a little bit of dappled kind of light coming down here and you can see how I'm changing out uh, going into the bigger brush obviously when I'm wanting to do kind of more dappled -y effects because it's easier with the bigger brush get a softer effect and I think I'm pretty much done now that is pretty much 
my finished picture. And that's it. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I'll speak to you again soon.